Hello and welcome to the War Report. I am your host Cyrus, joined by Quan, and this is the show where we talk about NXT and AEW. It's been a it's been a, a cool weekend. It's, a, a lot of stuff has been booming and has been going uh, going on in the wrestling world. How, how are you, Quan? I'm good, man. I'm chilling. Uh, that's it. I, I, nothing's really going on. Just, just work, <laughs> work in the gym. That's it. Yeah. Uh, What's good with I'm, you, man? I, I, I'm prepping to leave. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not obviously not like the network or anything, but it will be my birthday soon, and I'm leaving everything up to Quan. And I know he's trying to act like he's not nervous. <laughs> this is gonna fall apart. I want you to know that and right I, now. And I don't like that he <laughs> that he not nervous. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm look. <laughs> what you gonna do? <laughs> I I dog. No, I'm expecting where I'm gonna be at where I'm at, and all I'm gonna see you get, is you get a text. Uh, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna. Who gonna text you this first? Is, Ju- Justin. This is meals. meals. This is meals. <laughs> Anything that re- like pertains to the show that is like very super duper important or really pisses them off. You get the hey, so and I'm just like, damn. Well, I'm happy they don't text me. Uh, yeah, I, I got to resolve everything. <laughs> I, we, I would say that I've taken a lot of responsibility for this show, but now next week is all in your hands. <laughs> I'm ready, man. I'm good. Don't even worry and then you know, it. hey, man, everything's gonna go smooth, and then you know, then it'll be a uh, it'll be a co-parenting kind of thing. And I'm going to transition. I'm going to use that to transition to in the trenches. Renee Young had her baby. Finally. Yay. Um, the father is an unknown person, according to <laughs> WWE uh, uh, social media. And everybody's still be upset about that. Uh, I never, I never understood that. Like, why would I congratulate the father? Is doing? He didn't push no damn baby out. What do he do? Uh, I, I, I just, I just think it's normal for, you know, Congrats on the baby, just like period. But yeah, they don't. Moxie wasn't on in the fucking tweet. You think Moxie cares? I don't give a fuck. Yeah, right. One, I doubt Moxie cares. Two, I don't care. Three, why do you care? <laughs> <laughs> Y'all don't even know them. <laughs> like if if WWE don't want to acknowledge them, fuck it. WWE don't acknowledge a lot of people that work for a different company. Why would they? Yeah, so it doesn't really like it's so, it's so nothing. Like it it, it could have just been oh shit they had their baby and then you know they just keep it pushing, you know. You know, you know what man? Wrestling Twitter this weekend. It, it was oh, one of, I, it, it was one of these weekends where just like they made something out of nothing a lot all a lot all of week all weekend. <laughs> if I sound weird or like my vocals are off. I unhooked my mic stand, so I'm holding my mic like a rapper, and I'm swaying back and forth. So, my bad. I'm gonna try to stop, <laughs> but it, it it just comes natural. Uh, so to continue the in the trenches stuff, Moose and Kenny Omega have a match for the Impact World Championship on Saturday uh, at Against All Odds, which I think that's really cool. That that's kind of like casino themed in a sense, and they had it at Daily's place. So I, I, I thought I thought that was appropriate. Um, Did that already happen? Yeah, that, that happened just uh, the uh, Saturday previous. So before takeover, I didn't oh, watch, but I didn't watch it either. Moose lost, and now we're going to be getting a match. Uh, we're going to get Kenny Omega versus Sammy Callahan, uh, July seventeenth at Slammiversary. <laughs> Something has to give. PU. <laughs> yeah, one PU. <laughs> Two, if Kenny Omega beats Sammy Callahan, who is like, you know, Impact put a lot of stock into this guy, like that's their guy. Something is going wrong here. <laughs> uh. AEW got some sort of choke hold on them that they can't get rid of, bro. So uh, Tony Tony Khan got some incriminating photos on somebody or something. Hey, this, you, rem- you, you know remember I mean? you remember when I said Impact was a money laundering front? <laughs> he might be to- on to- Tony Khan said. <laughs> Hmm. Let's see. <laughs> did did a, did a little research. Uh, 
I put this on the docket, but it was kind of one of the worst poorly kept secrets going on uh, in the performance center. But Samoa Joe aims to return and has been seen at the PC. And literally every outlet was talking about it, <laughs> even though it was yeah. supposed to be like a surprise. Yeah, who leaking stuff at the PC, bro? It's getting bad. <laughs> is it is it because the PC is just like too open? I feel like not that it's too open, is that they have too many people around. Yeah. And Samoa Joe is not a dude you can hide. That's true. So, you know, even seeing him in a parking lot or just seeing him walking around, like he is a notable like he he's somebody that you could point out, especially if you've seen him on TV uh so many times. And, you know, any it can literally be it could be WWE themselves. Mm, that's true. It could it could be any, you know, one of these like uh new recruits or anything like that. I don't know how they crack I don't know how they crack down, quote unquote, on leakers, but I know once you get caught leaking, <laughs> you don't see TV, buddy. <laughs> you you stay away, uh, you are off TV for a very long time. And uh, we still haven't seen in the Shire since. <laughs> Where's Tyler Rust at? Injured. Is he injured? Yeah. Uh, that was. Him? That was. A, I don't know. You watch. You don't watch two five live, Brett? Because I heard it happened I there. I don't want. He's not even two hundred. He's, he's bigger than two hundred five pounds. I heard he was injured. We had this discussion, so, didn't we? No, I don't. Uh, I feel like we probably had it like two weeks ago. I feel like we talked about Tyler Rust's weight. Um. Okay. Yeah, he he's he's been gone for a minute, so Malcolm Bivens hasn't been on our screens for a really long time. But he's having bad luck, man. I'm saying, I think in in the shower would have probably been really really cool if they didn't leak the Keith Lee win. Well, no, in the shares with um, um no, Tinder. but like, oh, but they would have had like you know they would have been cool. Yeah, see, they would have been tag chance by now. Uh, I don't know about that, but they probably would have had a couple shots. I think they would have did some really good stuff in the Dusty Classic if they were around. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, so Samoa Joe was seen around the PC. But uh, next piece of news. So AEW received $43.75 million from TNT in 2020, and they still are in the red because they decided to invest in this goddamn video game. So, all right. I, I, know, a little, fuck? I know a little <laughs> bit of the business. Them being in the red, I don't think is a big deal as of right now. I don't think it's the thing to worry about. I am a little worried about, I hope this game's good, bro. If they're putting that much money in this game. I know games mm. cost a lot to, like, you know, start up and make, but, like, yeah. I just hope oh. it's good, man. I hope it sells, like, I saw I, I, I saw a very interesting point on Twitter where somebody was just like, okay, but like who like what company ever gets out of the red two years in? Right? So I was just like, you know what? I don't know business like that. But you know, makes sense to me. Yeah. But to go into the red over a video game. For was that real? the reasoning? How much did they say how much the game it, was costing? Uh you? so uh the headline, the headline uh, was still in the red due to the eight-figure game investment. Hmm. So I don't know how much exactly is going into the video game. I, it wasn't said in the article. Uh, the article is on Fightful. But eight figures is quite a bit. And I think that to stay in the red because you want to make your hashtag uh, no mercy, like this is kind of ridiculous. <laughs> Especially uh, whenever we get quote unquote news about the game. We're seeing sound design, niggas rattling tambourines and shit like that. Like we don't even <laughs> see gameplay. We don't see people behind computers. We don't see voice acting. We don't see motion capture, you know? So it's just like eight figures. It's been at least a year now. They had, uh, I mean, they had a little something to show us uh, during the first thing, but it's just like, damn, you, you, you can't even show us a, uh, uh, what is it character models? You know, so so some motherfuckers T posing. Yeah, 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 yeah. ain't got nothing. All, all y'all had was Kenny Omega and uh, who else they had in that shit? Chris, um, Chris Jericho. I think it's like Sheeta. 
that's it. That's all y'all boys got for us. Hey, it took uh, Nintendo two years to show Breath of the Wild too. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay, but Breath of the Wild two is a big game. <laughs> How the AEW video game ain't about to be as big as Hyrule, bro. <laughs> It's about to be a, a small stadium, a parking lot, and backstage area. I'm just saying, look. <laughs> if, if this is going to be the next No Mercy, these take time. Can I please tell me how many hours in my life I put into No Mercy, Cyrus? Uh, I hear about it from everybody. Like, I put a lot of hours into No Mercy. Um, the first wrestling game that I pay, uh, played without watching any wrestling <laughs> i uh i played um damn it was a smackdown game that had the rock on uh rock on it i think it's uh just, just, just bring, bring it. it yes yeah not ps2 the first one for ps2 mm-hmm. man I my friend had it i don't know why he had it because none of us watched wrestling <laughs> N- like me, my cousin, and him, none of us watched the wrestling. It don't matter, man. A good wrestling game just a good wrestling game. Yeah, That's right? Funny. Like, we may create a cause of every dog. I don't think we even touched anybody that wasn't either The Rock or Stone Cold. <laughs> uh, you know, Undertaker and Kane, we said, fuck it. We'll make calls and put, you know, all their cool shit on us. <laughs> yep. That's how you do it. So that, that was my... uh first little thing with wrestling games and i don't think i would play a wrestling game like till my friends get me 2k 18 for my birthday no for christmas mm. so there was a very i don't we'll get back into the actual wrestling talk but there was a really no, weird is wrestling talk. <laughs> it was like because i was i was always a, a xbox dude so like xbox mm. never had good wrestling games the best wrestling game xbox had was probably raw 2 and raw 2 was like what you mean? Y'all had a uh, backyard yeah, wrestling, bro. <laughs> I didn't play that shit, man. Not the Matt Cross. Matt Cross is on that game. That's crazy. Uh, I think uh, Fred Durst is in it, too. <laughs> is he? Yeah. He did. Fred, Fred Durst is in Here Come the Pain, too. Hey, man. Hey, man. Look everywhere. That. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> Connections. <laughs> but, um, yeah, they're, they're in the red due to this video game. Hopefully, we see more of this video game soon because, you know, I do like that they want to, you know, tune us in and show us a lot of the game, you know, uh, with like the, I guess, like showcases and stuff like that, the stuff that they do for YouTube. But that shit has to be more than seeing motherfuckers shake tambourines and stuff like that. Like they don't even have like people uh, like behind the computers, like showing them making models, you know, T poses or anything like that, showing us like concept art or an arena they they showed a lot of like the mobile games and stuff like that, and I guess that's how they plan on making their money back <laughs> with the uh, with the gambling joint. Man, my but, work. Man. So about the <laughs> <laughs> um, shout out to uh, Rich from uh, Daily Smart. He was telling us a little bit about the AEW uh, no, the GM, GM game. Yeah. yeah. I asked him about it. I was just like, all right, so like realistically, like no AEW slander, like how is it? And he was just like, dog, this shit is like I right. Yeah. Like he he didn't really and I think it's still uh I don't think it's out yet, is it? I, I think, think it's, it's still in I believe it's still in beta. Yeah, so he was just like, Yeah, it's just I right. so I don't know how they plan on making their money back with that. <laughs> but um the mo the uh the gambling game that shit about to make a motherfucker spend like millions of dollars on there uh playing blackjack with uh orange cassidy it was evil uno <laughs> <laughs> uh okay so some more nxt news we got great american bash coming up july 6th i'm looking forward to that that should be a really fun pay-per-view or oh wait, no, that's just gonna be on the uh yeah, that's right. just gonna be the TV special, my fault. It should excuse me. It should be fun. We already have some uh matches announced and preparations for it. And we'll talk about that when we get to the show, but that was cool. I like I, I like the last uh Great American Bash. Um I I love all their theme shows they have. Yeah. NXT does a great job with their theme shows. I think AEW does too, actually. So I uh 
I would say I did like Bash at the Beach. I thought Bash at the Beach was really cool. Yeah. Whatever. I don't. I don't like the name of Road Rager for Miami. I think <laughs> I, I like should have just did Bash at the Beach again. Yeah. I, 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 think I, that, I wonder if they lost like the rights to it or something. <laughs> WWE oh, yeah. said, "All right, not uh, again, give, buddy. Give, give me that back. What are you doing?" <laughs> uh, but nah, I, I wish they could u- use that again. Um, I think I already said like I love the naming convention for their pay per views. Like, uh, they're all casino based. Uh, yeah. so that's cool. I can. Uh, what what other TV specials they usually have? Uh, Blood and Guts is all right. right. Fighter Fest. They're doing all. Well, they're doing all those in July. They're doing Road Rager to Fighter Fest to Fight for the Fallen. Okay, I don't like Fighter Fest because the that shit came out two years after that whole joke was over. <laughs> yeah, they got they got to yeah. So it, it it was uh, it was a little dated. Uh, to say the least, but I think uh, Blood and Guts and I think Blood and Guts is cool. Whatever. So, Triple H has a media call last week uh, pre In Your House and <clears throat> he kind of set the world on fire for doing the bare minimal <laughs> of being a wrestling promoter and it's being confident in his brand uh, I would like to read the full quote, do. but I'm just gonna, no, I'm not gonna read the full quote. Nah, cause there's, uh, just a lot of stuff going on here, but the word, <clears throat> excuse me, the words that kind of pissed everybody off is the best female performers are in the WWE. If not, they want to be. Yeah. How, how you feel about that quote? Quan? How did like, wh- when you read that, what was the first thoughts that came to your mind? That's what he's supposed to say. You know what else? <laughs> Let me tell you something. Shout out to Vic Joseph for doubling down at the at the pay per view, saying we got the best women in wrestling. And, to, and tonight, <laughs> and tonight. He did, did he say it tonight too? Yeah, he said it uh, during the um, the tag team match with uh, Raquel and Team Ninja. Now I under, like I didn't like I know wrestlers. I know artists in general can be sensitive about their craft, but man, I didn't know wrestlers were this fucking sensitive. Dog. About this. You you would think the people so well you back. you would think the people that are in the carny business would be immune to the carny shit. Clearly not. Uh, it's it's kind of nuts. Um, and <laughs> I saw a lot of things from people that either had a WWE tryout or were in the WWE. So yeah. clearly, his you statement ain't there. wrong. You wanted to be there. You wanted you wanted to be there. Now you don't because your ass got kicked out, mm. or they uh you know they uh the w- whatever they signed you up for you wasn't down for it. But you wanted to be there. It was your childhood dream. Don't act like don't act like that part is not facts because now you're a part of Impact or AEW now. You know you you knew what it was, bro. Uh. I saw Deanna Perrazzo post uh, a, a, a screenshot of a what culture article. Oh, a what culture. Click, click, click bait article. What culture? <laughs> Dog, who fucking thinks about what culture in this day and age anymore, bruh? Showing that she is like the number one. Wrestling is so fucking subjective. WWE does have some of the best pe- female performers in the, like in the game undoubtedly like you can't argue that just the best wrestlers yeah. in general you really can't yeah argue i don't see how you can argue that they have they they have some of the best may, may, maybe they didn't like how it was worded because you know he has to sell the brand he has to but like he absolutely does have some of the best uh women performers there Bro, they got Mako Satamora sitting on their D show. You can't you, like <laughs> if she wants to be there. <laughs> she wants to be there. <laughs> um so you know, you can bring up stardom. I I do think that their roster is phenomenal, but we just seen Kyrie Sane and Io Shirai hop over from start of the WWE. So you can't act like some of the like you don't know the motivations of these wrestlers that you claim. Just because they're not there now doesn't mean that they don't want to be. I think the only person that is like, that is kind of like concrete 
that was just like, nah, fuck it. I, I just don't want to go and like never did a tryout or any bullshit like that was Naito. Naito said, I, you know, I don't want to go to WWE. I want to, uh, I want to be the man in Japan. I remember yeah, Walter for yeah. a long time. I remember Walter for a long time. So uh huh. He, uh-huh. yeah, he was just like, nah, I ain't, I ain't fucking with the E. Mm-hmm. He signed, got that Benz. Mm-hmm. Hmm. That that talk stopped. Right, 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 <laughs> on, right on Instagram with his girl mm-hmm. in, in the dealership. Yeah. The uh money talks. Yeah. You know? Uh the the deal got sweetened, bro. And you know what, dog? It would have been absolutely terrible if Walter never signed and then he was like asked out in the cold during this pandemic yeah when the indies died i mean well, when the british when the british indies died yeah that's terrible bro like yeah. uh but like you know they absolutely do and <laughs> you can't fault that like i uh i didn't think everybody would be really so upset over this over the weekend like people were really like really really mad and i was just like dog i, I ain't never seen Y'all at react this much to a media call. Yeah. It's Triple true. H has a lot of these. All the time. Right? I I, I, ain't, ne- I ain't never seen y'all motherfuckers act <laughs> like this. <laughs> Shit is nuts, man. But uh that's it for in the trenches. It, it, it's been uh it's been an eventful week. It's been fun. But let's get into take it uh take over in your house. Go, baby, and you never will be. Because this brand has done everything in their power to make you feel special. Well, you, you got the cool music, you got the lights, you got the fog machine, you got the girl. You know what they do to make Adam Cole feel special? They ring the freaking bell. Because on your best day, you couldn't lace my boots. You can't hang with me. You aren't on my level. And anybody who watches pro wrestling knows that. All right. So first things first, shout out to everybody that pulled up to the spaces after the show. That was very uh, nice. It was touching to have everybody on. Um, Motherfucker was acting like I did not want people on stage. But <laughs> why, why <laughs> you, let the, you let the ladies come up, man. Hey man, I hit invite. They said, nah, I'm good. So <laughs> it is what it is. It, it, it was either something about you or something about me. <laughs> Couldn't be but, me. Oh, okay. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? <laughs> this guy. This guy. Uh so I think we're gonna echo a lot of our thoughts that we said in the spaces, but we're gonna go a little bit more long form, of course, because we gotta save the concept for the show, baby. Um so first things first, let's get into the winner take all. Bronson Reed and MSK versus Elgato Del Fantasma, uh, Santos Escobar, Joaquin Wild, and Raul Mendoza. This match was fire, bro. Let me open up the Excel spreadsheet. <laughs> oh, you 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 pulling you pulling up the rankings, bro. The ratings. Let me see the ratings were. Yeah, I love that. I, that might have been. Uh, I'm not gonna say it's my favorite match of the night, but. It was up there. It's, it's exactly what I expected. High, high pace. Um, everybody did their thing. I love the. I said it in the spaces, but like I love this the whole, the whole camera work with uh, Escobar looking at the camera, talking shit, and then just mm. Bronson running right through him. Yeah. Um, who got the hot tag? Was it? Um, it was Nash Carter, right? Yes. Yeah, he's really good at that. I yeah, uh, I, I I'm glad that he is the uh, the hot, hot tag, tag guy. Yeah, because uh, what's his name? Get his ass whooped. <laughs> <laughs> what's leaving his ass whooped in the matches? Uh, I, I I think I think they're aware. Just like people, like people are okay with seeing the white man get his ass beat, <laughs> and then <laughs> and then the black dude coming in going crazy rather than coming to the white savior. But they they tapped in, bro. I, I think they're really really great. Yeah. Um, the beginning of the match, I really do like that. Uh, Santos Escobar basically like threw all his goons at uh at Bronson Reed at first, and they were just like, "Dog, I don't know what to do, man." You, you, I thought that was so interesting because he's never done that before. Where he's yeah, like, he like used his 
his guys as like you know pawns or like lackeys. Yeah, yeah. I, I never. I thought that was weird. Like I, that didn't seem like yeah. the, his kind of his character. Well, like I, I guess like you know there is an intimidation factor to Bronson Reed. I get like yeah, he's really sure. shook after getting squashed <laughs> a, a couple of weeks ago. So I thought that was uh really interesting and just like a lot of the facials from. You know, walking while in Mendoza, just being like, Wait, "What, what are you tagging me in for, bro? <laughs> what, you what are you doing?" <laughs> so, uh, I, th- I thought that was really uh fun stuff. And then once they got through like all of that, and the match resumed as normal, it, it was all really good stuff after that. And I think like at the last like three minutes, it just became like a regular tag match, and it, it was really good. I thought this was much better than the uh you know the regular tag match that you had like two weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, what, what what's the what's the number ranking for this or a rating? I gave it a three point seven out of five. Okay. Three point seven five out of five. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Uh, Santos. Uh, not Santos Escobar. Uh, Bronson Reed and MSK keep their championships, and we'll see what goes on after that. Because I, I I guess they're gonna just go right back into it for yeah. uh, Santos and. Read. Fine by right. me. Yeah, 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 fine by me. Yeah. I'm so mad uh, I called it. I'm so bad I called him Andrade on Twitter. <laughs> Dog. <laughs> I saw you tweet that. I looked at my phone and I was just like, no, I have to save him. <laughs> oh, no. Yo, who who was it that tweeted? Remember a Roy Rumble a couple years ago where Zia Lee came out and someone called Mark? Him? It was Mark. <laughs> 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 or was it the other way? <laughs> no, he Io Shirai came. Uh... Was it Io Shirai? I thought it was no, no, Zia no. Lee. It, 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 it was a take. It was a takeover. You uh, sure it wasn't the Rumble, bro? No, 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 no. no. It, it was a, it was a takeover match. Uh, I think it was like Kyrie Sane versus Shayna Baszler. And Io Shirai came out to uh, fight off Jessamyn Duke and uh, Marina Shafir. <laughs> this nigga Mark said, Zia Lee. I said, yo, I, I had to put him on blast, but you know, I felt bad because at the oh time I didn't really knew Mark like that. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> I still got the screenshot. So oh. <laughs> I, I, I'm going I'm to bring, bring that up on his birthday, oh, wedding day. Uh, if you say something stupid in the uh, in the wrestle chat, I got I got that saved for him. <laughs> <laughs> but speaking of Zia Lee, Mercedes Martinez and Zia Lee have a match that uh, it's okay. I thought uh, it was fine. This uh, um, I will oh, say Z- I will say Zia Lee looked a lot more comfortable. Mm-hmm. The, that's the longest match she's had in a long time. That might be the longest match she's ever had. Yeah, in NXT that I can think of. Um, and who better to work with than Mercedes Martinez? Like I said yeah. like, again, I'm gonna keep saying it, but like when in the uh, in the spaces, uh, Mercedes has probably 20 years worth of experience. Mm-hmm. If I'm gonna throw somebody on there in a pay per view, that really needs it. Yeah, or really just like it. really need somebody uh, like a ring general to really help them out. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> my thing is with Mercedes Martinez is she's gonna have to like kind of get like a win or like some heat back. I guess yeah. if that's what you because like her losing to Raquel Gonzalez and then like her like losing twice to Zia Lee back to back without having at least like, you know, some momentum or a win in the middle of that. I mean, she beat her ass, though, afterwards. Yeah, she she did. But, you know. Just a, just a win to solidify that, you know, she she still she's still in there, you know, uh, the match, though. You know. We've been worried about how Zia Lee was going to be implemented into the ecosystem of NXT without being the one hit a quitter, you know. And this is good. Uh, I guess. Oh, what is it? They they the story that was told that Mercedes Martinez was not one hundred percent when she was jumped on Tuesday. Like Jesus Christ, right? You ain't recovered yet. <laughs> uh. So I like that. That that softened the blow a little bit. It made sense. Uh, and obviously, it, it kind of seemed like it kind of got her, I guess, like for the finish, it kind of got her off guard because she was back on her feet yeah, that, <laughs> after that, the bell that, rung. <laughs> that finish was weird. It, just, it was so abrupt. Yeah. I, you know what? I, I think it was supposed to like be that way. 
so yeah. she can like get up and get her heat back and stuff like that. So, I mean, it all works out. Zia Lee gets her win, and then Mercedes Martinez just hoes her and Boa real quick, <laughs> and <Poor> then <laughs> yeah, and then for their troubles, well, for her troubles, she gets uh thrown off the ramp by uh Mei Ling. So that was cool. Stu kid, Stu kid, let their stoop. <laughs> you know what I mean? So chuck, chuck, they're off that motherfucker. Uh, <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. I, I thought the match was fine. No, uh, it seems like they're gonna have uh, since they're one and one, they seem like they might have their match, uh, the rubber match, and it should be a banger. And we'll see what happens with uh, Tian Shaw after that. And it's the faction. It's not. It's, it's, it's not her name. So I'm glad. I'm, I'm glad we came to the conclusion of that three weeks later. <laughs> <laughs> um what well, uh well, whatever I'm I don't I don't care about match order. Uh Raquel Gonzalez and Ember Moon. I forgot about this match in the spaces because it kind of just happened. And the match was just I like this is like, this this match is a flat three. Yeah if I had to give it a ranking or yeah. rating. I gave it a 3.25. Um I wouldn't have given it that. <laughs> I don't know who I could care less less about i don't know if it's raquel or if it's ember i've never really cared for ember i still don't think she really has a a character of her own i still don't like uh i will agree with that <clears throat> excuse me i don't know what's going on but like she's fa- she's fantastic in the ring i'll never get i'll never discredit her for being she's mm-hmm. easily one of the best workers in the ring her but ring. she she has like kind of just like the zoe sark issue where it's yeah, just like you're great like, in ring i just don't care yeah i don't care. and not really giving me a reason to. Um, Plus, we knew we all knew like yeah, no we knew what it was. Match. Yeah, she's not gonna yeah. win this match. We we knew what it was. Um, for it, for who I would say I cared the least for, I would have to say Ember Moon because it's been at least four months since she's returned. Right? Did she, did she come back Halloween Havoc? Oh God, yo, time. <laughs> Jesus Looking away from me. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. But you know, she's been around for a really long time and she kind of just like just been co- uh, you know, just riding off Shotzi's wave. So I don't I don't really like I don't, I don't really get and you know, all the all the sly comments about you know the uh the main roster women and stuff like that aside is just I don't really care about like what's really going on. Like I am way more invested in Shotzi Blackheart than I am for Ember Moon. And for Raquel's case, like I like her and Dakota way more than I like uh, Ember Moon because they actually have character and they're also, uh, well, Dakota Kai is also a really good worker. <laughs> Raquel just needs some like, you know, I just think some fine tuning. Yeah. A little, a little extra little experience. I, I think that Io Shirai is her best match. I just don't know what it is when it comes to these other competitors like is she gonna be is she only gonna be good in the davis you know the david versus goliath role or whatever or like how is she i I guess like how does she feel comfortable with like other styles because so far with mercedes martinez you know working the style that she's worked it wasn't (laughs) it wasn't meshing too well Ember is very fast, but I don't know. It, it just wasn't really meshing too well. But she worked really well with Rhea, which is interesting because they're, yeah, about, the, yeah. they're about the same size. Well, I think Raquel's a little taller, but body, body type-wise, they're pretty similar. Mm-hmm. Just, uh, so, both was, it's, it's interesting. Um, but yeah, I, I, I don't know what it is. Like, I, I know she hasn't been seen in a minute, but I guess like what would really be something for me is like, I want to see how she works against Tony Storm. I don't um, think Tony Storm's coming back, bro. I think she's made a roster. <laughs> but I know you. I know you want her back. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think she's no, made no, 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 no. I, I, I didn't, I didn't mean it like that. I just meant like you know we haven't seen her in a long time because she's like on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> she, she's just been chilling in Orlando, uh, just vibing out. But uh, I no, I... <laughs> you don't. I, don't I but. Uh, I would I would just really like to see how she works against somebody very technical, I guess. And if it don't work with that, then I guess it's a lost cause. But 
Ember Moon right now is the lost cost to me before Raquel, so it, it kind of is what it is. Like this match is like a flat three in my book. I don't really think it, like for me at least, I don't really think it helps solidify anything for Raquel. Rather than just like this is just another win to have, you know? Yeah. So just a little little notch to the belt. Yeah. So it is what it is. Cameron Grimes, L.A. Knight. The ladder match for the vacant million dollar championship. I like this match. <laughs> this match was very fun. I, I, re- I really enjoyed this match too, way more than I thought I would. Mm-hmm. By, by far, LA Knight's best match since he's got to the uh, NXT. Uh, uh, oh. Was it yeah. me or was, or was that belt, or was the belt really, really high up for no reason? Why was that belt so high in the air? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, two things I, about the belt. I like the case that they put it in. I thought that was really nice. They didn't just have it suspended like they do every other belt. They're not hanging that five hundred thousand dollar belt up in the air like that, <laughs> especially after the lick that was hit on the Thunderdome. <laughs> yeah. oh, could you imagine somebody ripped the fucking million dollar champ? That should like legit mm-hmm. five. That should look like legit five hundred. No, K. I'm telling you right now, they take that belt, they hit the uh, the diamond tester. Woo. It ain't beeping. <laughs> that shit ain't beeping, bro. You don't think so? <laughs> that should not be food, Rick. Uh, but no, I, I, I like this match uh, more than I thought I would. LA Knight definitely did come through. Um, he wasn't like a EC3 or a Lars Sullivan uh, in, the, in a ladder match. He definitely got out there and he was going crazy. So I thought that was really cool. You, you know what helped LA Knight, I think, a lot? He had the crowd to work with. Oh, yeah. I think that made a difference, too. Um <laughs> Speaking of the, the uh, takeover crowd, I guess <laughs> it, 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 I don't know. I don't know what, if the mics were bad. What, 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 was a crowd there? <laughs> what, was there a crowd? I saw them, but I, I certainly didn't hear anybody. Mm-hmm. I don't know if they were just mic bad or what. It was just they were silent. I, I didn't notice it as bad on this tonight's episode of NXT, but mm-hmm. takeover it definitely showed. It's it was very quiet. It was weird. Yeah. Um, I would say at first I didn't really notice because, you know, we've been, you know, we've been watching stuff with like not a full crowd or like, you know, the crowd at medium for like about a year now. Yeah. So I thought like the crowd was just like really regular, which is, you know, when you put it like that, like this is a takeover with like full capacity, like that's, that should not be the case. I'm uh, sure it was only like 400 people, but still, you can make some more noise than that. I've mm-hmm. I've, I've seen indie shows where they made more noise than that with like <laughs> like 100 people in the, in the room. So, uh, it was just strange. But you know, back to the match. Well, oh uh, wait, if you if you if you work at NXT and you know you listen to the podcast, can you tell us what happened, bro? What happened, bro? <laughs> can can, did, it, can, can you tell us it. what happened at the truck? I did read that um, on Reddit. Somebody said they went and they were just like, it was a long day. They had to like go to full sale and then take a bus. And then there were no food or refreshments there. What? Yeah, it was a whole thing. So. <clears throat> that's crazy. Also, I would have ate before I went there. Um, yeah. But nah, that's crazy. So I can so, see how that'd be a long day. It is what it is. Um, Cameron Grimes definitely came through, helped LA Knight. Uh, they're both. Uh, Impact alumni, so having that history and chemistry is really cool. Impact, uh, let us know that you know. <laughs> I, I love when they the, do the that. Ti- the time, the timely tweet. I don't think it's corny. I don't. I don't I, think it's I corny. It. I, think, I love when they do that. I, I think it's funny because it funny. I'm still not gonna watch it. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, uh, what is it when they had McIntyre, Bobby Lashley, and MVP all doing the same, like doing the same shit that was uh. At Mania or like whatever pay per view, and I was just like, "That's cool." Turn the peacock, like I'm yeah, not watching right? that shit. <laughs> um, so LA Knight wins, and I was just like, "Hey man, I hit the Drewski. It is what it is." You you guys were absolutely right that LA Knight needed this way more than Cameron Grimes did. I just showed. didn't. I I just didn't like LA. I just don't like LA Knight. Like this match is very impressive, but I would like, uh, you know, somebody that he has chemistry uh, with prior. So, 
It's fine. I would just like to see what he does like with some other folks. I'm not trying to move the goal purse or anything, but it's just like, you know, that, that's just how I'm feeling. <laughs> uh, what, what, what was the rating for this one, Kwan? Give it a four. I would, I would have given it the same. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then the final match, the Fatal Five Way, Karrion Cross versus Kyle O'Reilly versus Adam Cole versus Johnny Gargano versus Pete Dunn. This match very controversial. <laughs> How do you feel? Um, I feel about this match how I felt about the uh, the Becky Charlotte and Ronda Rousey match. Mm, okay. Whenever it was Ronda and Becky in that match, it was not good. Hmm. Whenever Karrion was in there, it was not good. You wasn't feeling it? It was not good. Not even the finish? <laughs> I like the finish. It's not. It's not. It was not good. Well, like, uh, like the finish aside, like, it, it's fine. But, like, anything else prior to that, it's just not good. <laughs> you know what it kind of reminded me of? It reminded me of the, uh, the North American title ladder match when Lars would come in. But the only difference was, like, Lars, it wasn't, like, as bad. Yeah, is that weird? <laughs> like, uh, Lars La- definitely had something going on. Uh, you know, sorry if that uh, bothered anybody, but I just had to say it. But like, he did have something going on at this time, and you know, Lars Sullivan didn't go through two weeks of verbal ass kickings from everybody prior to that ladder match. So there's like literally no faith in this guy. You know. Which is uh, so, that's, that's, I don't understand. It's not like and like we're not supposed to have faith in him, but it's just like we have kind of like the wrong. I like. I don't want to be corny and be like go away, he. But like, he's just boring to people, and I think that's yeah. bad. <laughs> like that's very very bad. I um, haven't seen a champion portrayed like this in a long time. I'm trying to think. The last time I was seen like a, like maybe when Rey Mysterio had the ch- the belt. And they booked him to get his ass kicked the whole time. <laughs> it's, uh, except and, this and time you know, it's like verbally. It's so weird. And like, I can't even say that Karrion Cross is a better tra- uh, chaser than he is a champion because I didn't care about the chase either. <laughs> yeah. I didn't give a shit about the chase. I do think like th- this whole thing is like really, really weird. Uh, but like this match is really just four of NXT hardest workers having a match and then carrying cross coming off at, at on the top, you know? Yeah. Uh, what is it? A- everybody else did the research and he just signed his name on the paper. Like yeah, this, you, uh, you were definitely that guy in the group project. He was like, yeah. Uh, and, and you know what? He didn't even bring a pen to sign it. He had to ask somebody <laughs> else for it. Uh, I like, I really did think that everything was really cool. Uh, besides like the carrying stuff and i was talking to justin and mark after we did the spaces uh just on psn and justin was bringing up like there whenever like cross would work with a lot of these other guys like these guys were working really stiff like he he felt as if like you know (laughs) they didn't really fuck with cross uh all of the all the right people and kyle o'reilly being the nice enough person to be like all right yeah i don't want to do it i'll do it (laughs) <laughs> and then t- uh, takes the choke, which it should have been Cole. Yeah, it probably should have been Cole. Like it, uh, I, I said it in the spaces. Um, Adam Cole started this uh, <laughs> this downhill spiral for this man, <laughs> and for him to only have like one to two spots with Adam Cole, where he really wanted like rip his head off, was not enough for me. Yeah, you think Karrion Cross has been talking that Q talk backstage? Uh, I heard he was good friends with Drake Younger, mm. aka Drake Wars. If you if you're not familiar with his uh, his indie background, but um, yeah, him uh, him and Scarlett are they they were associates of one of the most hated men in the PC, and now that he's gone. <laughs> I doubt like nobody really likes this one. Like, <laughs> um, we've also heard things that he is not the most liked in the PC. For shit, take your pick. 
Uh, but nah, it him not really chasing after Adam Cole and really like trying to rip his head off. Like, I I don't know that it really makes sense to me. What is it? Pete Dunn going, "Hey yo, bring your ass over here to Carrion," and then him slumping Carrion. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Come on, man! What is this shit? Um, I didn't really like uh, what is it? Carrion Cross really going uh, what is it? They, uh, he had a really stiff spot with Gargano, and I didn't think that shit was necessary either. Oh, we we threw him onto the uh, the apron, right? Is that what he did? Yeah, it, uh, it looked it looked uh, bad. Uh, I, 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 uh, I know what you're talking about. It looked bad. Uh, you can It's an audio podcast, but I'm shaking my head violently, <laughs> bro. That, is, that shit was uh, ridiculous. Yeah, he, he threw him on the apron, hard as shit. And you know, I <laughs> I didn't think you know Gargano was very that disrespectful to him. You know, like, I don't really think he needed that smoke. Cole definitely needed all that smoke for uh, <laughs> that he was giving everybody else. But um, what is it? Pete Dunn also choked out Carrion. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. Uh, I looked back. That boy head was like a grape. <laughs> <laughs> and the ref said, hey, yo, Pete, what you doing? Bro? You got to chill out. And you know what? But shit, Pete Dunn probably don't fuck with him either because he probably didn't even need to choke him that hard. I'm not gonna speculate. Hey man, you can really like. Now I want to run the match back though. I want to run it back now. When doing a worked choke, come on, bro, you ain't really putting pressure, a lot of pressure like that. So to have this, you can't just make your head purple, bro. Uh, <laughs> Brock be doing that. Oh, bro, 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 he he he's just a tomato, period. <laughs> but like, uh. That was really weird stuff. And then, you know, for Kyle O'Reilly to be the one to, you know, lose there, I guess it's fine because Karrion Cross is another heel. But he wanted to kill, like, he wanted to kill Adam Cole. Like, should have did it. <laughs> like, I, I definitely well, think he, he should have been maybe, the one to take that. Maybe the, it'll still happen. Maybe we'll, we'll get there. I mean, they they they're not gonna do this fatal five way again. It needed to happen in this fatal five way. I think it, I think it could be Cole Cross. I said, well, I don't know. I'm assuming this this match at Great American Bash. I guess I'm skipping ahead a little bit. No, nah, is, is somehow gonna be like a pseudo number one contenders match anyway. We'll see. It would only make sense. I mean, yeah, we'll uh, we'll see what happens in the following weeks. I, I I do agree with that as well. But that is our thoughts for in your house overall i think the show is i think the show is good but kind of on the weaker end of, uh, weaker anyway. takeover. yeah uh this is not i don't think this is gonna be a takeover i really watch back in full so uh i'll definitely watch what is it uh the winner take all match if they uploaded it to like youtube or something but like everything mm-hmm. else nah and I only watched the main event over to just like see all the stuff that Justin was telling me about. So yeah, now I want to see it. <laughs> yeah, the uh, the takeover was straight. But with that said, let's get into NXT, and we don't have to do a transition, so we could just really get into it. William Regal comes out, says some words. We're all worried. We're all tweeting. Oh no, we're all tweeting. We're gonna miss him. Cross comes out. Talk shit to Regal because that's the only man he can really talk shit to. Uh, then we get the Samoan Joseph back. The theme plays. Crowd is going ape shit. The worst kept secret <laughs> of this weekend comes to fruition. Samoa Joe's back. And I really like that Regal was just like, hey, man. I need you to take this job off my hands. And Joe said, oh, what hell no? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't want this. <laughs> hell no, man. That shit crazy. Paperwork? That shit sucks. Um, and then Regal goes, or they, they kind of just, he was just like, you, you know, you don't need me to take your job. You just need me to, you know, really put hands on a motherfucker. That's all you want to do. It, yeah, that's really all you want to do in life and on NXT. Uh, and the Regal's just like, violence. And then Regal's just like, okay, you can't go unless provoked. And I was just like, oh, so 
we we get we get uh joe can get physical <laughs> like physical physical uh oh, that's, that's a stone cold that's a stone cold rule uh <laughs> i can touch you, you but you, you can't touch me <laughs> Yeah, basically, I, did you? Do you? I don't. You were. I don't think you were watching when um Stone like right after Stone Cold retired and he was like, quote unquote, the sheriff of uh of Raw. Oh he was, like, yeah, he was, like, on the ATV, and that was the rule. Like you, he like as long as you don't like you don't hit nobody unless they provoke you. And so anytime like you know someone got like pushed into him or something like that, mm-hmm. that's kind of But I, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yes, you know Samoa Joe is in, uh is in that role now and. Throughout this whole episode, are you all you get is oh man, I'd like to see that match. Oh man, I'd like to see that match. Like four times, bro. Yeah, and then you know, Samoa Joe accepts his new job offer as the sheriff or enforcer, scourge, whatever you want to call him. And then he gets it carrying across his face, and he tells him, "Get the fuck out of here!" <laughs> and carrying across walks <laughs> away. <laughs> That boy pussy. <laughs> I, 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 might, I might have to throw the 50 cent in the back for Mark, bruh. Because we smell it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that boy is something. Not my champ, bruh. <laughs> Get that belt off this motherfucker, please. My man, walked, my man walked away with his head down. Right? In front, his, in front of his wife. Come on, man. We can't keep bringing her out here, bruh. What is his wife? Shit is embarrassing. Especially if she, especially if she's not going to talk anymore, I think that's so, uh, that's so lame that she's not going to speak. And I wish they didn't. Uh, I said it last week, but I wish they didn't kill it because everybody was just like, "So you gonna let your bitch before you?" And like that was something everybody was saying, and I'm just like, "Please, bro, just let them work the gimmick, bro." Oh uh, man, Damn, that poor guy. Man. <laughs> no, fuck yeah. him. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, poor guy. Well, fuck him. Like this, this dude's having a rough, uh, rough three weeks now. Uh, just continuing with Samoa Joe, uh, the repeating trend. Kyle O'Reilly and Adam Cole are fighting. <laughs> Samoa Joe breaks that shit up real quick. <laughs> Chill out, over here. Ch- uh, ch- choked out Adam Cole. <laughs> we we gonna see that come back. And yeah. I believe I didn't have my headphones uh, in. I just saw it uh, from my laptop screen. But he's the one that calls for the match at a Great American Bash, correct? Uh, he's the one that calls for it. it. I don't think I, I don't know. He 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 said something, but uh, and he said something, and then when I got back to my laptop, they were talking about you know Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly for a Great American Bash. So I, that's what I just I thought. I don't even remember. I'll be honest with you. I probably on my phone or something. If we, if we Jesus keep Christ, if, if we keep that was a, that was a heat moment, bro. I was, I was probably on my phone. I was cleaning my room. <laughs> uh. Then later on in the show, um, Johnny Gargano and Austin Theory just pull up in William, William Regal's office, just being obnoxious it, and annoying. It, it wasn't even in the office. It was, it was just during an interview. No, no, no. It was, a, it was the interview in the office because they had the, uh, his brass knuckles was there. Oh, shit. I don't, I don't know why Mackenzie was sitting or standing where his chair would be, but that's where they were. But you know, you know what it was though, because I think they messed up. Remember, because they were like doing an interview and they were walking out the door, and then like, it, yeah, well, yeah, 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 yeah. I, uh, I think, I think they, they like frantically like, yo, we gotta do an interview. We're like, let's, let's, where are we gonna go? Where are we gonna go? And they just put it. In his <laughs> it was weird because like, he left. Yeah, the that, building. yeah, that that was a weird uh, uh, transition segment, but you know, hopefully, who, 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 whoever hit the button at the uh, <laughs> whoever hit the button at the production truck, hopefully they didn't get in too much trouble. That was the AEW guys. <laughs> that was. All right, man. <laughs> uh, Johnny Gargano and Austin Theory just come up being obnoxious, uh, obnoxious and Samojo just tells them simple words, yo, get out. <laughs> and they do. Uh, and then Pete Dunn just pulls up and just stares at Joe. Need you know, he, he, everybody, everybody, Everybody is saying that. No matter... Is Samoa Joe was in the room with another wrestler. They said, I need that. Need that. <laughs> so that's all the Samoa Joe stuff. Oh, no. Uh, towards the end uh, of the episode, he uh, Regal just gets asked, so, how do you feel like Samoa Joe did tonight? He was like, he did good. You know, and the NXT order is back. <laughs> oh, he, he also got involved in the... Um... Oh, what else happened? Ember Moon and oh, Shotzi yeah. versus Raquel and Dakota. Yo, if he puts if he puts uh, Raquel in the Kushina clutch, <laughs> <laughs> that boy. Is, 
Come on, nigga. <laughs> He, he can't he can't get physical with them. They need a hire uh they need a hire a woman back. Let it uh <laughs> let Beth call, do it. Oh uh, that'd be great, but I was gonna jokingly say uh call Mickey James back. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I would like to see uh Beth Phoenix get physical again if she can. Or if she wants to. I know bumping on the ring sucks. <laughs> so if you get if you can get a comfy job in wrestling doing something else, you know, it's cool. Oh, I can't wait to talk about Ted DiBiase. Oh, man. Yeah, actually, fuck it. Let's get into it. What a bonus. Uh, <laughs> L.A. Knight uh, has his little ceremony for the Million Dollar Championship. It starts out with L.A. Knight truly just being a mark. Yeah. Uh, just letting him really do his thing. And then That was snap. probably sincere, too. That probably Yeah, sincere. yeah. That was like, I, I would believe that that was like something really real or, you know, what a... I, there's a level to like, you know, Dick Ryan, you can also do. I doubt he was like on Ted DiBiase's jock like that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but you know, it was a, it was a nice little moment. I, I thought that was really cool. And then snap, turned on the character. Mm-hmm. This man said, "You know what? I got the legacy. You know, I did the thing. I got the belt. Fuck, I need you for." Mm-hmm. Wham! Swang on DiBiase, <laughs> bro. I say, yo, what? Shout out rate, to DiBiase at rate, his rate, old, at his big age taking a bump and rate then that bump, rate that back bump. Huh? <laughs> yeah, a back bump and they get his work uh work working the stomps, bro. I fuck with that. That I'm sorry, I don't know why that back bump made me laugh so hard when I saw. I was I was in tears. <laughs> tears laughing. I, saw, I was in shock. I was I was just yeah. like, damn, that boy took that bump real quick. <laughs> how old is Ted DiBiase? That's like a reoccurring. Um, that's like a reoccurring thing on this fucking podcast. This oh, how old is this person? <laughs> uh, I believe uh, Chris Novak. Shout out to you. Uh, he tweeted his uh, age, and I believe he is sixty-seven. Chris wouldn't know, know that. Yeah, he's sixty-seven. Uh, C- Chris probably Googled it like we did. <laughs> <laughs> no, he knows. He just knows. Right, he just knows things. I honestly, I wish I like. Uh, I knew. Uh, <laughs> I can remember dates and times like he does because no, I can't remember a single match from 2004, uh, 2015. Uh, outside of the mania, of course, but uh, yeah, that, that was uh, I thought this I match, that. I mean, this segment, great. I care about LA Knight now, yeah, it made it, it, made I, it, uh, it tur- turns out it wasn't work rate, it was all character that all along. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I I I'm impressed. So and Cameron Grad's got a, a great mm-hmm. face pop. It all worked out. What is it? The crowd was trying to do their thing, and it was just like, nah, you can't, you can't hijack, you can't do what you're trying to do right now. Yeah. La Knight did his thing. The crowd was very silent, and then as soon as it turned on, the crowd erupted. Cameron Grimes came out, they erupted again. Like, this yep. was a really, like, this is a perfect segment. I'd like, this Wait, segment is fantastic. Yeah. There's nothing I would change about this. So, yeah, uh, yeah, everybody. We'll, we'll see how, how this feud kind of goes, uh, moving forward. But this was really good stuff. I really, uh, really did enjoy it. Uh, Kushida has a match. He has it, and Kyle O'Reilly is at the outside watching, and Kyle O'Reilly challenges to Kushida to a match next week after he uh, bodies whoever that guy was, Trey something. Trey Baxter. Yeah. Or as a... Uh, Christian what, uh, Blake, I believe. Wait, what did Carlos call him? Carlos called him... Uh, uh, bud- budget, budget Murphy. <laughs> budget Murphy. <laughs> no. I saw I saw that motherfucker. I said, "Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna reheat these spare ribs, bro. This this is ridiculous." Uh, so Kyle O'Reilly and Kushida is gonna be having the match. Adam Cole is also uh, assigned to find a competitor so he could have his match to I guess build some momentum going into Great American Bash. Who do you think he picks? Oh, Dexter Lumis or something? Oh, I have no idea. Oh, he's not picking Dexter Lumis. Dexter Lumis is going to kill his ass. I, I, I think he would pick yeah, like... Yeah, uh, unfinished business. Uh, I don't, I don't want to be rude, but I feel like he would pick someone uh, he feels like he could really beat like uh, Jake. Leon Ruff. What's Leon Ruff doing? 
Absolutely jack shit. You know what? It might be Leon Ruff. <laughs> yeah, that's a better guess than uh, the Jake Atlas, I guess. Um, they're not going to. Nah, they're, not, they're not having Jake Atlas. Don't, don't, say that, don't say that. Don't say that. Don't say that. Do not, do not say what I think you were about to say. I'm, don't say I'm, it. I'm, I was, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying they're not going to have him lose anytime soon. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying anything that you think I'm saying. <laughs> you, but you know what I'm saying. I'm saying he ain't going to lose this month. That's all. I, I, I know what you say. All right. Just making sure we're on the same page. <laughs> oh. <laughs> GYV and <laughs> Timothy Thatcher <laughs> wants a job. <laughs> you have a tornado tag match. <laughs> Great match. Uh, Really good. Uh, I thought this match was really nice. And uh, for me, at least, on uh, the way that I was watching, it was 10.08. <laughs> <laughs> and then that's just the funny way. <laughs> and I could have swore I saw the ref look at uh not uh Zach Gibson. What's the other guy's name? James Drake. Uh, yeah, yeah the they, they were looking at James Drake. He looked at him. Say, hey, you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go home, bro. Let's go home. Bro. <laughs> uh so I thought this match was really good. It uh they they kicked each other's ass. It was very brawly. Uh they they fought a lot uh, at the outside of the ring. Did a lot of crazy spots. I thought the uh, the air raid crash from the top rope was insane. Them tra- uh, them transitioning holds and stuff like that. But uh, Timothy Thatcher and uh, Zach Gibson, I thought that was really good. These guys have insane chemistry with each other and themselves. I had never thought that Tommaso Ciampa and a, a team of Tommaso Ciampa and Timothy Thatcher would actually be this good. I think it is probably saved both of them too. Cause I don't know what they'd be doing otherwise at this point. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I, I'm really glad it's working out for the, uh, for the both of them, especially Timothy Thatcher. I didn't think he would like when they signed him, I was like, that doesn't seem like a guy WWE would sign. When they signed Timothy Thatcher, I was like, Oh, I can't wait for this. Yeah, and I was just like, "Oh, that? what the fuck?" Yeah, then that that was like my next thought. I was just like, "Oh, but like, where are they going to go with like the really technical dude, especially if he's not going to be at NXT UK?" Yeah, I was, I was shocked when he wasn't going to be on NXT UK. So, uh, him shooting straight up to NXT really shows how much they you know re- truly see in him. And they put him out there immediately too. It wasn't even like. Mm-hmm. Like it was like the week he got signed. <laughs> Shit, Jeez. what word? What word do you need? Uh, I feel like NXT when they see a dude that isn't a high flyer or you know a big man. Like if, if you're really technical in NXT, you kind of get like you know shot to the top, or like yeah. you you get featured on TV relatively quickly. You know, Triple H loved that shit. You can always tell the shit like Triple I mean, H really likes. But like. For somebody that is really technically sound, what do you really need to change? Yeah, sure. That's fair. Because, like, uh, I guess for, like, high-flying, you know, you would have to make sure, you know, they know uh, if WWE rings are different from any other ring that they, like, worked for for before. So, yeah. you know, they got to practice fucking, you know, doing, uh, was it, frog splashes and cross double, bodies double and back shit. Double backflips and shit. Yeah, you know, they got to be with the Circus Olay boys, you know, uh, at, at the PC for, like, like Reginald? for the technical nigga. Yeah, uh, Re- Reginald and them, uh, him and his account. <laughs> uh, but, like, for the technical dudes, it's just like, shit, you probably uh, talk to Norman Smiley and he'd be like, all right, hold my wrist. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they out the PC in five minutes, you know, and they just do some cardio after. You got it. <laughs> No, I thought this match was really good. I, I liked it a lot. <laughs> These guys uh, can go. Uh, Timothy Thatcher and Tommaso Ciampa win. So it is going to most likely... Wait, did they confirm that it's going to be them versus MSK at Great American Bash? I don't think they said anything yet. But okay, but it, it feels that way. That's what it's going to be. Uh, Thatcher stole their popcorn, so that's not going to go uh, <laughs> unpunished. <laughs> that match should be something, though, because... Uh, it, it's either going to be a Styles Clash train wreck, or it's going to be like Styles Clash greatness. So I, I can't see that being a bad match. I don't. I think Champ is too good of a wrestler and a ring general to do that. Let that match be bad. Yeah. Uh, I just never. I just never seen MSK really work 
technically. Like, uh, yeah, like when Timothy Thatcher got him, you know, circling around, gripping all of your joints. What the hell is Nash Carter going to do? <laughs> so, uh, we'll we'll see what happens. Oh, are you, you going to look up if something technical they've done? <laughs> no, I was uh, uh, <laughs> no. Uh, I just saw you pull your phone out, so I thought I was going to uh, say I'm going to dock it. <laughs> uh, we're going to go into the quick hits now. So, Imperium versus Breezango. Uh, Imperium won, and in a very disrespectful fashion, put the Imperium uh, flag over them. Uh, where the fuck is Walter, bro? Because I don't really care about this shit. He's back on, he's back on UK. Uh, I, I like Imperium. I really do. But without Walter like being eminent or anything like that, I kind of just like they're kind of just there for me right well, now. Well, they, they got screwed over because of Wolf leaving. That kind of ruined whatever momentum they did have on the show. This kind of, so I mean, was, shit that that feud to me that seemed like that feud was done. Yeah. Oh, uh, where well, would yeah, it uh, stop them out? Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you think they would have? Uh, they would have done Wolf Dane. Uh, Maverick versus uh, Walter and the rest of them. They better not waste Walter's time with that bullshit. Exactly. They're, so they're, 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 they're not. They're not <laughs> flying the states to do that. They're not doing that. You're not flying him halfway across the country, uh, the world to do that. Do that. <laughs> they probably uh, have, Maverick. Yeah, dog, killing that man. <laughs> I feel like he already has. Has he? Probably. Oh, he probably got. He probably got killed by somebody else. Uh, we have Raquel Gonzalez and Dakota Kai versus Caden Carter and Casey Cannon Zaro. This match is very whatever. I think the only thing that I would like to point out in this thing, uh, or in this match, is Beth Phoenix saying that Dakota Kai seems very selfish throwing in Raquel in to her quest for gold. Selfishly, mm. without thinking about uh, Raquel's probably like fucking tired from the match that she's had, mm. which the match was all right, bro. I don't think it the, took a lot out of her, but the, the seeds are being planted. Yeah, the the seeds are being planted there. Weird. I do like I do like it's being put into that manner. The yeah. more that Dakota Kai seems to be pushing Raquel to, you know, help her uh, come up, it might come to like a breaking point at some point. Like, also, I just want to say, everybody, <clears throat> we know the turn is coming, right? What happened, man? Stop with the oh, she gonna turn out because, like, soon as she got the belt, it's the most obvious shit you could have called. Yeah. This is this is not you pointing up to the stands at uh at the base, knocking out a home run, nigga. Everybody knew that like this type of shit was most likely going to come, so. Just let it happen. <laughs> Just let it happen. Uh, final thing on the quick hit. Boy, I don't give a shit about Hit Row versus Ever Rise. You are not. You are not gonna get dog. I like Hit Row. Right. I know that both the uh Top Dollar and Adonis both need some reps under their belt. Ever Rise, they could take a pin, but I don't give a shit. I like. I don't get dog. They ripped up their dollhouse. <laughs> Why do they have a dollhouse? I'm not watching whatever the fuck that ever rise shit that they keep telling me to uh to tune into on NXT. I'm not watching that shit. I'm not watching that shit, bro. I don't care. I don't even know when it comes on. Or what it comes on. I don't even know. Like, is it on YouTube? Is it on TikTok? It, 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 no, I I feel like it might be one of them things that the, uh, that pop up on Instagram, but I don't get a notification for that. I, I get, I get, I get, I get a, I, I get a notification when uh, the bump and kickoff panels are about to start. They don't mention no ever rise shit to me. Okay, so oh, on the on the IG live, <laughs> uh, IG live and uh, whatever uh, Twitter thing is. So, uh, I don't care about it. Like, <laughs> get this shit out of the way because I'm, uh, if this, if this thing goes on any longer, I do, I no longer care about hit row. Or uh, get, hit it's, or it's like hit be a little squash or hit row outside of Sore Scott because they're gonna have to do something with him as well. I want to see B Fab So is she ready? Let's transition into NXT. I mean uh, <laughs> AEW. <laughs> Let's 
man. You talk way too much. I talk, I talk too much, huh? I, I, yeah, the baby's got to play. Oh, Kenny Omega going for a cheap shot. Omega trying to gain this advantage here. And one up uh, his number one contender for the AEW title. Now, Omega raking the eyes, going fingers deep in the eyes of Jungle Boy. So what started out as a basic interview segment has turned into this fiasco. Absolutely unhinged. Kenny Omega sending Jungle Boy into the ropes. Jungle Boy drops it, sweeps off the leg of Kenny Omega. He's looking for the snare trap. The snare trap. But the Young Bucks. Young Bucks coming to Omega's aid, saving his ass again. I'll tell you something. This tells me all I need to know. Omega and the Young Bucks and Callum are highly concerned about the Jungle Boy and what's coming up in two weeks. JR, no one has escaped the snare trap. If Jungle Boy locks that in on Saturday Night Dynamite, we could see a new AEW World Champion. All right, so what, what, what was this? Friday, Friday Night Dynamite, we here Bruh. again. I'm, I'm looking at the docket. I'm like, did we not talk about this uh, stuff already? I could have sworn we talked about this already. Did, I'm like, these episodes being on on Friday or Saturday has don't, completely lost me. Quad, do not scare me like that. I could have sworn I updated the docket, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I think we're good. I think I don't remember. You know what? Let's pause the recording. No. We said the docket was not enough last week. <laughs> and now I think I completely fucked it up. It's fine. Uh hold on. I am Go on <clears throat> I am on the AEW YouTube right now. And I've this is uh th- this is correct. This is this is all correct. And I think the reason why you say that is because now we get a, a promo from the Pinnacle talking about the inner circle. Was it Inner Circle versus talking about Pinnacle? I, like, I'm so, yeah. like, it, Inner Circle was talking about the Pinnacle last week, and now we're getting the Pinnacle's rebuttal. Oh, they need to go back to Wednesdays, mm-hmm. Wednesdays ASAP, bro. I can't keep doing this. <laughs> dog, Friday, dog, I do not care. You're not going to get me to care on a Friday. Uh, so, like we said, uh, Pinnacle does a rebuttal for the Inner Circle's promo last week. FTR shitted on uh, LAX. Um, Sammy Guevara seems to be the replacement for Jericho. Because he doesn't, MJF doesn't really mention Jericho when he talks about who ass he's going to kick next. Um, we talk, me and Quant, uh, I, t- I texted you about it. And then you're just like, hey, you, th- you think it's weird that he doesn't really mention Jericho here? He talks about uh, Sammy Guevara. And then he was just like, oh, damn, Chris Jericho might not be able to go. <clears throat> My response to that was, if you knew Jericho can't fucking go, why'd you set this shit up this way, man? <laughs> Uh, so Sammy Guevara is going to fight two battles. He's going to fight Sean Spears, and then he's going to fight MJF for Jericho's honor. How you, you feel about of, this? You got a lot of work to do. I, I would have. <laughs> he's like stupid, bro. I, I, at this so point, I'm, I'm I'm pretty over this pinnacle. Um... Yes, I'm. I am absolutely over it. The stadium stampede, not uh. Not uh, you know, settling it, and then my my issue with AEW is that like everybody is always interested in like getting at each other mm-hmm. to the point where, well, like they always want to get at each other, and then in their promos they're saying that we are the best faction or I'm the best wrestler, blah blah blah, this and that, and it's just like you want to prove that, then win the tag belts. Win the singles championship. If you're the if you're the best faction in AEW, then you would have those things. Because if we want to go by that logic, like I said before, in a circle, accomplish jack shit outside of Jericho. Pinnacle, nothing outside of FCR. There's nothing at all. Were they even champions by the time they formed? No, they weren't. But like. Still, like they're they're the only people that have any accolades under their belt. Yeah. Like, I'm like, 
the fir- the first group to win blood or guts that doesn't mean shit to me these men are fighting over like what are they even fighting for at this point well they're having a cage match this week an MMA cage match that should be exciting for fucking what i don't know what are these it's guys what, fighting for it's, it's wardlow week did you know he had he, he had a match on evolution he had a match on dark they're gonna have a match on uh you see uh, I, I see that i'm rubbing i'm rubbing off on you elevation brother that's how much you didn't care <laughs> what did i say you said evolution <laughs> That's how much Wait, you don't. That's bro, how much you. That's I, that's I, how I much you don't care. I don't care. I, it's, I don't care anymore. Uh, nah. Uh, this whole thing, I really don't care for this feud, and honestly, I don't care for a lot of the feuds on AEW. Um, Early, no, no, I don't. I, I can't. I feel like I hope they turn it up when they get back on the road. I really do. I feel like, like they kind of. Turn it up when you get up back on the road, but that is no excuse to be having these shit shows that you be having, bro. Shows are terrible. <laughs> it's it's been two months now and two pay per views, and these shows still suck ass. Ugh. These shows are terrible, and I guess they don't. I feel like I guess they feel like they don't want to try anymore because like playoffs, but like, oh, what kind of shitty excuse is that? You know what the crazy part is too. It's not like. I think the quality of the show is affecting the viewership. I know that the viewership is already, you know, shitty it's, because of the time mm-hmm. slot, but even the numbers are still going down. Yeah. <laughs> like more every week. And I, I and I and I like these publications being like, you know, AEW numbers are dog shit, but it's just like, hey, but they're up though. It is just like, no, these numbers are dog shit. Like if NXT was this down, like, dog. If NXT was this down bad, the narrative would be a lot different. A lot different. It'd be fucking insane. Um, but another feud that I don't care for still, wait, hold on. I have to make sure that this was on the show or not, because you got me psyched out. <laughs> no, you're good. Bro. Oh, no, 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 no. This was definitely on the show. So FDR is wasting our time again. Tensions are high. Uh, but when the hell is it going to equal to anything? And Hangman Page is still doing stuff. Why is Hangman Page tagging with the Dark Order if he's not with Dark Order? I don't know, man. They why did Ricky start? Why did Ricky start slap them and ran? <laughs> I don't. Even, I don't remember. I don't, I don't even remember this match. This was the main event, right? No. Uh, but he uh, he slapped them and ran. Dog, your neck not even pieced together properly right now. Why the fuck you trying to fuck with Brian Cage right now? Oh. I'm saying your neck fractured, bro. That buckle bomb. You're not. You're not no selling that like Heyman Page, brother. <laughs> Shit is ridiculous. And then, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, things are going to happen. Uh, oh, one thing I wanted to mention <clears throat> in the inner circle and pinnacle thing is that once again, the inner circle, I mean, uh, the inner circle forces forces their hand uh, upon the pinnacle by destroying their limo. And Jake Hager does not know how to operate a forklift. So he didn't flip the... Uh, the limousine over that would have been really cool but he kind of just lifted up and then put it down and then they were just like yeah i mean he did some damage you know what the for the forklift is there to flip it over not just suspend it in the air for a little bit yeah at least remember, tear the roof off though you remember when stone cold when triple h left the stone cold up in the car and the forklift and dropped that nigga mm-hmm. and, he, and then he came back on raw the next day <laughs> You remember when Braun when, when Braun Strowman fucking was in the ambulance and he came back? <laughs> Fire, <laughs> yo! But I'll tell you, like a twelve year old me or whatever the hell that happened, I thought that man was dead. I was like this nigga died. I knew I knew wrestling wasn't real. I was like this nigga didn't know way he survived that. How did he survive that? Yeah, I that believe boy, it. That that pillow. I mean, I mean that car was full of pillows, boy. <laughs> uh. So yeah, they did that and they didn't flip it over. Uh, next thing we have Christian Cage versus Angelico. Uh, Angelico uh, is trying is answering the Matt Hardy bounty. We're doing bounties again. You remember when they did that last year with MJF hiring Butcher and the Blade? Mm-hmm. Innovation. I like the match. I like the match in- oh, the match was fine. Um, just like my thing was last week. I don't like that they keep bringing in like you know the hybrid two just to lose. Like that's like honest. That's my only issue with this match. The match is fine. 
Uh, I always thought that uh, Angelico was a solid worker. Uh, Christian in this one, he, he, I, I, he, 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 not, he not out working like he said he would. Yo, he's like 90 years old, bro. All right, but don't, don't, don't cap to me, though. He's been wrestling since the Clinton administration. We gotta give him get cut him some slack, bro. I'm not I'm not cutting slack. If you say if you say you can outwork everybody, then goddamn do it. Mm. Uh, that's your whole goddamn gimmick here. And if you out here, uh, uh, goddamn five minutes into the match, I, I'm worried, brother. <laughs> uh, but the match is fine, and Helico loses. Um, Andrade put some clothes on. That's all that's uh, there for us. Eddie Kingston, uh, Eddie Kingston, Pac, and Pentagon Jr. come together because Phoenix is still hurt, and they face the, the Young Bucks versus Brian Cutler, and Brandon, they win. Brandon, uh, whatever. Um, I didn't even think he was in the match because all uh, he was on the apron for most of it, just running interferences. I didn't even think he was a part of the match, uh, and to get their win back because. <laughs> fuck no you're not pinning any either buck or uh either jackson uh they pinned cutler for the win Maybe and knew that was coming it is what it is i thought eddie kingston was really good in this match Pop, uh yeah they're good, good. Great we're good. That, that's about it the bucks uh the bucks and cutler aren't so great i i think this match is just really nothing because you know i you know what i like i, I like the um the bucks had the travis scott's on and they gave brandon cutler some Little cheap ass general release Jordans. I appreciated that. I thought that was pretty funny. They they gave they gave him the foot action joints. Yeah, they gave him the. Uh... <laughs> no disrespect if you call your Jordans off foot action. I'm just saying. <laughs> hey, you know what I mean. I'm just saying. They yeah, had the tra- they had the Travis Scott song. My man's had on the uh, just a regular general release, not even on sneakers. Mm-hmm. Just, just just a regular old release. A- Alien Express. Uh. Darby Allen and Sting have a promo. I thought this promo was actually really, really good. Um, <clears throat> Sting feels as if Darby Allen has nothing to prove, but Darby Allen has absolutely everything to prove because, you know, Sting has kind of been the only thing that has kept him interesting for this uh, sort of period in time. So he's going to have a handicap match. <laughs> Against uh, Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page. This thing is an idiot. <laughs> yeah, this thing is an idiot, especially when, uh, what is it? Ethan Page slang him to the sun. <laughs> so uh, that match should be whatever. I feel like he's going to come off on top or he's might, he might lose. And he's going to lose. I don't, I don't think they're going to book. I, I, I don't think Tony Khan would, would book a, a that, motherfucker, but that motherfucker books a lot of things. I don't think that that would be that's something that's very something uh, raw would do. I don't think he wants to do anything that's something that would, would happen on a raw. I mean, he does. He's done things stupider than raw. Yeah. <laughs> Let, let's let's not act like he's above. Uh, I'm not saying I'm not saying he's <laughs> Booker of the Year. I'm just saying I think he had a little bit more sense than that. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, a match that yo. Smash sucks. Miro versus Evil Uno. Smash his ass. You had to talk about. I don't even remember. I'm pretty sure I, I was. I just kind of okay on my phone at that point. I didn't. I care. watched. I watched it today. Miro sucks. Evil Uno even worse. <laughs> I feel like this motherfucker got the. Uh, thanks for being at PWG higher. This guy sucks. This guy is not good and. I am really, really, really fucking tired of <clears throat> whenever Dark Order does anything. We're gonna do it for Brody Lee. You can't you can't keep running that. Especially if you're not gonna give them anything. Um you can't they can't keep doing that. I don't mind them doing that because it's still pretty fresh. My my they, thing was <laughs> they can't they can't keep doing that and then you know jobbing these guys out. They can't keep doing that. It's kind of hurting the legacy. This is, yeah, I do understand that. This I, is I about, come from that. But like this is like the third time they've done the I'm gonna do this for Brody and then motherfucker get his ass beat. I just thought it was pretty green of them to have dedicate the master Brody and then have Brody's son come out. 
and then lose. And then Miro stare him down. Like, come on, man. What y'all doing? And also, don't don't try to pitch us evil fucking Uno being a serious competitor <laughs> versus Miro. Are you fucking serious? <laughs> are you are you for real? Evil Uno, the Dark Order has not done anything. Anything since uh, John Silver got injured. Talk to him. I don't know. Why, why do I need to believe in this guy in the slightest? Because he said he's going to de- dedicate it to Brody Lee. That is some cheap bullshit. That's not, that's not fair. They need to stop doing that. Especially if they're not going to give him anything. Also, this match sucks. Miro's not great. These guys... Bro, niggas been capping about Miro on the internet for a long time. Now, I go on Squared Circle Reddit. They've been talking about this is Miro's best run ever. I'm like, come on, dog. This match is awful. This is like, this is worse than his match against Aiden English. I don't remember that. I do. I really did not enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember that at all. <laughs> match is terrible, bro. I don't know why it went on this long. I don't know why it was this competitive. I. I don't even know why this match was booked. Seriously. Would it like Miro finally got, you know, he finally grabbed the brass ring and then they got him wrestling with fucking evil Uno. Go, go, going, going at least eight plus minutes against uh, having a eight minutes plus a competitive match going back and forth against evil Uno. With player Uno. Mm. And then also uh, they do it. They, they're doing it for Rody Lee. And then, uh, Evil Uno does uh, Brody Lee's move and then uh, Miro's just like, I guess and then just beats his ass. <laughs> how, how are you doing the, I'm going to do this for Brody Lee and then whenever they do a tribute to any of his moves, they no-sell it. Oh man, Cody no-selling that power bomb still pissed me off. Disrespectful. That's, that, that was disrespectful. They have like they seriously have to stop doing that. This match is terrible. Uh, Miro sucks, and so does the Dark Order. <laughs> Go ahead, then. <laughs> uh, no quick hits because <laughs> you know I just fucked this whole thing up. But Britt Baker has a promo. Uh, I get. I, I guess you could say she barred Nyla Rose up. This is where the feud is going. It is what it is. Uh, she said she looked good flipping them burgers, and I was just like, "Oh damn, that was green." Smoked <laughs> her, and then uh, Nyla Rose has a match against Layla Hirsch. You can't sell me on Layla Hirsch. I'm sorry. This man. Uh, Are you talking about Layla Minoru Suzuki Hirsch? Uh, ma- uh, I mean uh, Ishii. I'm sorry, Ishii. Yeah, yeah. Tomori, Tomori, Ishii. Tom- uh, Tomori Ishii incarnate. <laughs> no Ishii Hirsch. Not uh, I didn't think she was that great in stardom, and I don't think she's that great now. Uh, isn't she still kind of like new to this though, or she's been doing this for a minute? I don't know. Uh, if she's new, uh, she ain't good, so hopefully she gets there someday. And Nyla Rose wins, of course. Kenny Omega has uh, he cuts another promo for Jungle Boy where I don't know, he he gets uh, a little erotic. Whenever he talks about Jungle Boy, I, I, I don't really understand it. Um, what don't you understand? Why? <laughs> why, why? Why does he have to talk about Jungle Boy in this manner? Uh, How'd that saying go? What isn't said doesn't need to be explained or something like that? I guess we could say that about everything about AEW. <laughs> the show's over, fellas. Oh, I'm sorry. What's understood, <laughs> what's understood doesn't need to be explained. All right. You feel me? There ain't nothing and there ain't nothing understood on the AEW <laughs> side. Um so my issue with this promo is that, you know, I get it. Like we talked about it earlier uh, when I was texting you about it. I get it. Jungle Boy is not very experienced. So he kind of needs Kenny Omega to take the lead here and really like sell this match and you know, kind of do the talking for him. But and you can't talk. Uh, Kenny is horrible on the mic, even though he says that he's one of the best on the mic. I thought that was really hilarious, but he can't really put this promos together, bro. And when Jungle, uh, when he was calling out Jungle Boy, say he ain't got the guts to come out, and Jungle Boy came out, 
and then he didn't grab the mic for Tony Schiavone before he left. I was just like, so is this motherfucker just not going to speak? And then he does the, you talk too much. And then that was it. And then he got his mm. ass whooped. That's not enough for me. Uh, when I was telling you about it, you were just saying like, you know, like we get that a jungle boy is not, you know, he may not be it on the mic, right? This is about the six stop and start push for jungle boy. He has not picked up a mic in any of those things. Two years. We're two years now. Six, six stop and start pushes. There has to be some grow in between those, like these pushes, bro. Like there just has to be. I think the in ring is there. I'm with you there. I think the in ring is there, but I have not seen any growth character wise. I do agree with that. Like the music, whatever, the look, whatever, you know, that may all and the in ring may that may be all fine and it all works, but there's clearly something missing here. And whenever he gets the push or whenever he like, you know, starts to get to this top, they don't try to work on that. They just say, okay, the kit that he currently has is really good, but like, it's not enough. Mm -hmm. And I will say, I do like that. He came out here without a uh, jungle express, but you know, that kind of like, to me, that shows like some sort of growth there. Like, he doesn't really need them to, like, fight his battles or, like, you know, he could stand out there on his own, show some, quote-unquote, guts that Kenny Omega said he didn't have. But, like, you don't have the confidence to really say anything either. So it kind of just, like, negates everything for me. Yeah. So uh, hopefully they work on that in the future. The match is soon, so it's too late for that shit now. <laughs> but uh, So it is what it is. Um, there is a new member of the Nightmare family. Brock Anderson. Bro, but you, you got to say how Tony Schiavone said it. he was like, we have Brock Anderson. <laughs> like the way he, for, for like half a second, I, I was like, did they get Lesnar? I was like, there's no way they got Nigga, Lesnar. Nigga, please. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they get Brock Lesnar. <laughs> I was about to say, they the Tony Schiavone the he, he did that he must have did that on purpose he knew what he was doing he yeah 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 um Brock Anderson looked like a goddamn dork swagless monkey this nigga's a swagless dork and uh I was listening to Jim Cornette talk about this segment because after I saw it I was just like this is like baffling I had to like I closed the app. And then when I opened it back up, that was like the first video of my recommendation. <laughs> uh, so what he had to say, and it's something that I, uh, I didn't really think about, but he was just like, yo, this is Arn Anderson's son. If you want to make him a big deal, get this nigga some, uh, some good clothes, bruh. This nigga look like a regular ass pool boy. Loafers, no socks. Cargo <laughs> shorts. The, the eyes on polo? Tucked in. Come on, bro. This nigga look like a dork. Look. And I know, and I know they try to uh they try to uh make it look like he did like a little spine buster when they came out and did the thing, but that nigga did a uh just a uh a was it a double leg? Yeah, a little <clears> down. <throat> um what was I gonna say? Man, swaggerless company, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, it's a swaggerless company, and this is like, uh, nigga, 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 niggas want to talk about Charlotte being the, uh, you know, the legacy child or whatever. So we ain't never seen Brock Anderson work at all, and you know, I can, I, I can see that this motherfucker can't work. Just the way he was standing in that ring, I could tell he wasn't ready for this. And they're, and they're, and they're about to put this motherfucker on national television. You know what I feel bad about though. He definitely got the the Anderson jeans where you look like you're 30, even though you're in your early 20s. <laughs> he I, how he looked 30 and he looked 30 and 19 at the same time is because he's swaggerless. That's why it's the face, bro. He, he's already losing hair, just like a dad. <laughs> Come on, bro. They, uh, what is it? Them royalties ain't paying for no hair plugs, bro. Mm. Uh, 
say, uh, you know, I think the Cody verse of AEW is really the worst stuff that AEW has to offer. And for the end of this segment, we're getting Kenny, uh, not Kenny, uh, Cody versus QT Marshall again, but in a South Beach strap match. What's up with the straps, bro? I think Cody got a little kink or something, bro. I'm going to keep it a stack with you. Amen. All I got to say is the type of strap that happens on South Beach ain't the one they about to be wrestling with. <laughs> so when I, re- when I saw that flyer, I was just like, what are y'all boys doing? <laughs> um, when, when QT Marshall and uh, Cody started taking their belts off, Hey yo. Hey. Next segment. <laughs> Lance that, Archer beats up a jobber, bro. That man is kinky. <laughs> that boy, that boy a freak, bro. Uh Lance Archer beats up a job. This would be my quick hits, really. Uh Lance Archer beats up a jobber and Jay Cargill says that she has a plan. AKA, I would like to be on TV, please. Uh, yeah, yeah. So. That, that, that Lance Archer match is fire. I love that. I, I love that squash. That was fire. Yeah, it was good squash. That boy in there is like, let's let's get this over with and just toss him back out. The the few times that AEW matches exactly what it needs to be. Yep. <laughs> uh, he just goes out there and just beats his ass. So that's it for AEW. Uh regarding stuff for the Patreon, me and Quan are cooking something up. I just have to send him a list of things. We're gonna have uh we're just gonna review a lot of matches, uh a random set of matches. At my choosing, and sometimes Quan's choosing. I'll hey, let you know when it's your week. What the, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, if you don't want to, I could, I, I could uh, take the charge. And we'll no, pick a lot I, of things I, until I, something I, comes I to mind. Do you know what I mean? Uh, I, I, I'll come up with a list of matches. You'll come up with a list of matches, and we'll talk about that in the Patreon, and then we'll start that next month. So we'll have like a fresh start and be on top of that. Um, monthly. We'll talk about at least one old takeover or one AEW pay per view. So, uh, yeah, that that's what's going to be happening on the Patreon. If you're not subscribed to us on Patreon, well, uh, subscribe at the A Show RNC. We have Spot Callers, The Evasion Diaries, which is really great. I finally listened to the first episode. Uh, if you listen to Recut Gems on the main channel rnc radio it's kind of just that but like in a very fun way they take a deep dive to more than just what happened at this point in time like you know there's cultural relevance uh involved fun guests shout out to a plus and j5 on the first episode mark mark's on the second one mark who is an encyclopedia same as novak uh of just things every thousands <laughs> for some reason just, just things period <laughs> this man mark is insane so if you, you want to listen to that i i mean I, I gotta get closer with mark man I, me and mark are very much alike i don't think he really knows that yeah y'all both weird as hell <laughs> <laughs> i don't think mark realizes we're very much we're like very close to the same age we both were like kind of into the same shit like yeah. right around the same time uh, let, let's see if, uh, have you been keeping up with the playoffs? Maybe we could sneak you into RSPN before, uh, the season's over. We'll see what happens. Not <laughs> Hashtag we'll see, bro. We'll see. We'll see. Um, other things happening on the Patreon. Me, uh, me and Justin will be doing a new show. There will also be a spot callers coming relatively soon where we talked about, oh my God, what did we talk about? Look at you. We literally recorded it yesterday. Look at you. Um, let me look at my notes. Uh, PWG All Star Weekend. That's what it was. Thirteen, really fun show. So that'll be coming to the Patreon as well. Wait, what's the main event for that show? Chosen Bro, Matt Riddle, Jeff Cobb versus uh, Lucha Bros. That sounds fire. Yeah, uh, Ricochet and Walter is also on there. That um, sounds fire. Jo- Jonah Rock and Keith Lee is on there. Uh, so really, really, uh, really good stuff on the card. I PWG is a little jarring at this, uh, at this period that we both are in, but, um, would this, would this post, uh, what's that joint called? What's that building there at Reseda? No, uh, this, this was the, uh, Reseda, uh, it, it, it took, this is 2007. Oh shit. Okay. Yeah. 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 
Uh, no, 2017. How about 2007? Sorry. How about to say? My fault. Oh, my fault. My fault. <laughs> 2017. So Reseda is still there. Uh, we we talk about the new, we talk about the new venue and uh, Justin's actually been to uh, that venue. So yeah, I think he was at the first one, right? When they first went. Uh, when yeah, when he first uh, went to LA, that was like uh, the thing that he did. Um, yeah, and then. There's other stuff on the Patreon as well. There's going to be some stardom content as well if you're into Joshi wrestling. And yeah, so subscribe uh, the A Show RNC. You can also follow the A Show RNC on Twitter. You can follow me, Cyrus, at H underscore visibility. You can follow Quan at the comeback spot. And that is it for us. We'll see you guys. <laughs> Ain't no we, baby. <laughs> Quan will see your ass next week. I'm going to go enjoy my birthday. Uh, so, shout out to everybody. Thanks for listening. See you in let me, uh, 4th of July, I guess. <laughs>